maybe this is gonna be a productive, being pushed a little out of my comfort zone activity here. I'm gonna do my very best to not DNF anything else. I'm starting to lose hope a little bit, but we got there. I said I was not going to DNF anything else, but I just couldn't, I couldn't. I literally just got onto Goodreads, readers top 80 new mysteries and thrillers. Let's go back through here. I'm actually kind of thinking that this could be a two video series. The first video we read the ones that I already own and the second video being the ones that I get through Kindle Unlimited. This round was me reading books that I already owned. So theoretically, these should be things I was gonna do, have a great time with. It was not like my most successful round of reading. I'm actually hoping very much that the ones that were not on my TBR are gonna do better than this because this was kind of meh. Stay tuned for round two with Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> So if you guys will recall, this is the second video in a two-part vlog series, which I've never done before, but why not? And uh, in the first round, we read books from the Goodreads 80 buzziest, most recommended mysteries of the last three years. We read uh, ones that I had already had on my TBR. So I don't know how that went yet, but you guys do. Uh, and then today we are going to be reading the ones that are not on my physical TBR, but I do have access to through Kindle Unlimited. So I thought that that might be kind of a fun thing to see head to head, which ones I own versus which ones I got through subscriptions, like which is better. So the TBR for that, first of all, is His and Hers from Alice Feeney, which I am aware may be skewing things, but I will say the reason I decided to keep it in here is that The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth which was in the first video, I did not buy. It was sent to me in PR, so, and it's not the kind of book I would normally pick up. So to me, those are like my two head-to-head, -head, like wouldn't normally pick this up, but we're trying something. We're trying something here. And His and Hers is the most recommended Alice Feeney I have had. And if I hate this, we just know that she's utterly not for me. The Boy from the Woods by Harlan Coben. The Good Lie by A.R. Tory, The Therapist by B.A. Paris, and 20 Years Later by Charlie Donnelly. So that is my intended TBR for this. I do need to make sure that these are all still on Kindle Unlimited, but that is the plan. So let's see how it goes. I am nervous because there's, I'm put, these are all things that are interesting to me, but these are not necessarily like the kind of book I would pick up. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how this does, if these are some of the most recommended ones by other people that maybe this is going to be a productive being pushed a little out of my comfort zone activity here. So let's see. <laughs> I have finished the first book and it went really well, like kind of surprisingly well. So I started with The Therapist by B.A. Paris and first impressions are that B.A. Paris is a very good writer. So in terms of the quality of this book, definitely can see why this is an author that a lot of people really enjoy. It is a domestic suspense. I think that that is fair to say, which is not my genre, though I, Asterix, learned more about myself, about why it's not really my genre. But with that being said, this is one of the domestic suspense I've liked more than a lot of other ones I've read in recent years. I thought it was, it's too long, I'll give it that. And the heroine or like our point of view character, Alice is too stupid to live, but that's like baked into the plot ultimately in a way that I can, I, I can kind of make my peace with that. So the setup is, is that there's this very exclusive neighborhood in London called The Circle. It's got, like it's a gated community. You barely even realize that you're in the city when you're in there. Um, and it's a very tight knit little community where everybody's in each other's business. Alice and her boyfriend Leo move into this house that they have bought together and they're starting to get to know their other neighbors. Uh, and in the course of that, Alice finds out that former occupant of the house, Nina, was murdered there. 
and she freaks out and she starts getting really into digging into what happened. Uh, they think that Nina's husband Oliver did it, but Alice isn't so sure. And Nina was a therapist, so you know, hence the therapist. So it's digging through. One thing I will say I really enjoyed is that this was not really a dual timeline, which I was worried about. The more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm wondering if I liked it. My problem with this is just that it's a domestic suspense. And, and the reading experience, this gave me some insight because this is a very good version of what it is. And it was too long. So, you know take that at an occasion. Like I'm wrestling with myself of like, should I give this four stars? I think I am gonna still give it a three and a half because what I've realized is that a domestic suspense, the enjoyment that I think the, the reading experience is supposed to give you is that you don't see a twist coming. For me, that creates a little bit of just like lack of immersion in the reading experience because the whole time I'm trying to figure out what the twist is. So with a mystery or a thriller that are not domestic suspense, in general, my ideal situation is that you have a few different suspects and you may actually be pretty sure you know who done it, but a lot of what it's about is trying to prove it and less you know, trying to blindside you at the end. That's less the vibe. And that to me is a more enjoyable experience because it's more about like trying to find the clues about how you can prove that they did it and less about blindsiding you. Because when I'm expected to be blindsided, I just spend all my time looking around as a reader. So this helped me concretize that as what my, uh, that being what I don't like about this subgenre. Because it's become so known for its twistiness, I just don't personally find that to be a very enjoyable reading experience in general. This one though, I did actually really quite enjoy, even though I was aware, like I was annoyed that I was looking for the twist, which is what made me aware of like, oh, this is what I don't like about this reading experience or this subgenre. I don't like feeling like I'm on guard looking for that. So all that to say, I think I should still give it a three and a half because I did ultimately find Alice kind of annoying, even though it ultimately I see why, but that was kind of annoying and it was too long. So I think it should still get a three and a half from me. Um, but I felt like this was a good, ex uh, this is an example of a very well done version of what it is, I think. Um, now I'm not as into this world. So for those of you who think that there are other BA Pierces that are better, totally get that. But for me, as somebody who has not sought out a lot of the genre since I realized it wasn't my thing, this was actually kind of a nice change of pace and I ended up really enjoying it. So I'd give it a three and a half. That's like a B plus. The twist, part of it I saw coming, part of it I didn't. And I actually really like where the book leaves off. I actually quite, I like that quite a lot. So with that being said, I'm going to call this one a, not a surprise success, but like a, I'm, I guess a surprise that I ended up liking it as much as I did. And I see why this one is popular. I see why it made the list. So I think we're off to a pretty good start here. Hi, I need to take my hair down before I go to bed, but I did want to tell you guys that I had a very quick DNF of The Good Lie, I think is what it was called, by... A.R. Tory, I want to say. Nothing interesting to report, just the prose was simultaneously so boring and bland. It was just like very matter of fact, like this happened and then this happened and also grading somehow at the same time. I didn't make it past 10%. So that's just like a total wash <laughs> slash waste. So we're just going to move swiftly onwards to whatever the next one is. Hello, we've got another DNF and also, I'm sorry, I've got a new medication and it is breaking me out like I have not been broken out since I was a teenager. So I apologize for the face, but I have another DNF and it is not a surprise, but I did make a lot. I got to like 30% on this one. So His and Hers by Alice Feeney. Now caveat here, this is far and away the Alice Feeney I have liked the best. I like the writing better so far. I think I probably, I should go check what happens. I think I know who done it, but it's not, I don't know, like it's not as infuriating as the situation in Daisy Darker, <laughs> I don't think. Um, so, you know, I, I think 
Of the Alice Feeney, this is the version I could most be down with, but I just kind of got bored. So set up, we have a reporter who was the anchor and she got replaced, but she's going back to her roots because there's a dead body in like her hometown. And when she gets there, her ex-husband is the detective on the scene. It's called his and hers because it's sort of like he said, she said, and they're both unreliable, it feels like. So they're both hiding things, you know, etc. And I thought the setup was cool. It just wasn't, I don't know. I just got bored, honestly. So I officially can say Alice Feeney is just not an author for me, but this was my most successful outing with her because it didn't make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> the book. Uh, and I am also going to make an audible call here. Because I've already DNF two of my five books, I think what I'm going to do, I barely got into the good lie. Like I think I got generously 10% in. So I think I'm just going to switch that one out for The Housemaid, which was one of the other ones I was looking at reading, because I have seen the sequel to The Housemaid on a lot of anticipated lists, and I'm kind of thinking it could make the Goodreads Choice Awards this year. I think it comes out later in the year, so it would be good for me to have read The Housemaid before getting to the sequel if I have to get to it. So I'm just going to pretend that I didn't pick The Good Lie, and we're just going to swap in The Housemaid. So we're still I hope I'm hoping to finish at least four books because that's what I did in the first round. That's the goal. So unless something is just insufferable, I'm going to do my very best to not DNF anything else. But that's where we are right now. So let's move to the next book where I'm hopefully going to have finished it. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. So I actually finished a book, which is very exciting. I finished 20 Years Later by Charlie Donnelly. And you know, it was fine. I think that he is a very competent writer. So I thought it was a well done book. The setup is that we have, well, it's based around 9-11. Theoretically, one of my, we'll get, I have a problem with how that was incorporated. Anyway, so it's set up around 9-11. Um, there is an infamous accused murderess in the building on the day that the towers fall and she is presumed dead. 20 years later, they find like a shard of her bone. So they're like, okay, cool. She definitely was here, but it kind of like sparks a new interest in a new investigation. We have a main character who is like a news reporter who's using that to like make her money move. There's also a detective. They end up having kind of a relationship. Things go from there. My issue with this book is it's too full because that setup is really interesting. And I think if the book had just focused on that, it would have been a lot more successful. There's these big side plots with what the real history of our main character is. And I just think it was not interesting and unnecessary. So it just makes the whole book kind of like an over full blah fest because no one thing is getting enough attention. So I give it three stars. Like I think it's fine, but I think for how good the writing is, it could have been a lot better if it hadn't been so full of detritus. So yeah, I mean, I'm happy to recommend this author now that I know quality of his writing. So like, that's cool. I will not remember this book next week. <laughs> so it's just sort of forgettable. Uh, but it was fine. Three stars. At least I finished a book. We'll call that a win. <laughs> I have some exciting news to report, which is I really enjoyed a book. I was starting to lose hope a little bit, but we got there. And this is why I do these projects, because it pushes me out of my comfort zone, and sometimes it's a miss, and sometimes it's a hit. So I actually ended up very much enjoying The Housemaid by Frida someone. It's not the best written mystery thriller I've read, but it is was so entertaining. I just had such a good time in it. Premise is that our first point of view character, Millie, is going to this house to try to get a job. And we kind of surmise that she's like really down on her luck. She just got out of prison for something. So she's having a really hard time finding a job. She's living in her car. And this is like a housekeeping slash like light nannying services kind of situation. And the woman, Nina, that she's going to work for is just like 
has so many mind games. And we eventually get Nina's perspective as well. So we essentially have like these two characters who are really at odds and things are just like really escalating. It takes a little bit for the escalation to come, but like by the 50% mark, like things are chugging along. I found this so readable and so entertaining. There was an element of this book that I did not expect. Because part of this is definitely very well-trod territory from a domestic suspense. um, And I'm not going to get into what that is because I don't want it to be a spoiler. But there is also a part of this that I did not think she was going to like go there. And she she went there and further than I expected in a way that I thought was so fun. Like such a fun and entertaining path to take with this kind of book. Uh, For those of you who have read it, it's the stuff that is alluded to in the epilogue that I assume is going to be the basis for the sequel. I just was like, oh, I, okay. Like, this is a really interesting journey for this, this character. So anyway, all that to say, I thought this was so entertaining. Like I said, I had some like, if I was going to sit here and get technical with it, I had some problems with it. But it was so fun that I wasn't worried about any of those problems. So yeah, I just had a great time with it. I'm going to give it four stars. And I'm actually hoping that the sequel is in the Goodreads Choice Award finalist next year, or not next year, at the end of this year, because I would love to have an excuse to see where she goes with how she leaves off the story. So hit and a reminder of why I do these projects, because I do find things that I wouldn't have enjoyed otherwise. So win all around. failed guys. I I said I was not going to DNF anything else, but I just couldn't. I couldn't. So The Boy from the Woods by Harlan Coben. (sighs) I'm not sure if it's a bad book, but it's not a book for me. Here's the thing. So, okay, it is a, it's supposed to be about this boy who was found in the wild. And then like, there's also this missing girl. It seems like it's getting like, I don't know. There, there's like this lawyer who's like this kind of older woman and really sassy. I don't know. Like I'm I'm failing to even have the words to describe this book right now. I'm sorry. I'm still waking up. The point is I the vibes are rancid. I just there's something in the tone that is just rubbing me the wrong way and I finally put my finger on it that it is tickling in my brain the same feeling that Stephen King's Bill Hodges series gave me vis-a-vis race and ableism. (laughs) And once I saw that, I was like, oh no, I'm not reading this anymore. Like, I just can't, I don't know. I know that they're friends, I think. Um, Harlan Coben is having an author event in The Outsider. Like, that's one of the precipitating events of the story. And I can see that the prose is very readable. Like, it's giving me kind of like Dan Brown or, you know, Stephen King when I like what he does. Uh, Very bingeable, very readable entertainment, but the vibes are off and it really rubbed me the wrong way. So I don't know. I did hear when I mentioned this one in the first part of this vlog, many people were like, oh, the boy from the woods is not one of his better ones. Like, don't start with that one. So I guess you guys were right. Uh, I'm not going to rule out ever reading from him again, but I did not enjoy my time with the boy from the woods. So I'm DNFing it, which means, well, I guess now we can transition into like the final wrap up here. So We're looking at a 50% DNF rate for the second round. Now, did I find two books that I really enjoyed and kind of surprised me? Yes, I did. But I also couldn't get through three of them. And honestly, 20 years later, I can't even remember much about it now. And I should have just like I would have DNF'd it had it not been for this project. So, you know, final results wise, for this round, my average rating of books I finished was three and a half, but my overall rating, if I included the DNFs, was an average of 1.75. So it's like very polar 
responses to some of these books from me. Let's talk about this kind of like at the bigger picture level here of like comparing the two rounds and talking about my overall feelings for my results here. Because I think I've now read, I think it's like 51% of the 80 books that were on this most popular mystery of the last few years list. And of the roughly half I've read, I've enjoyed 63% and I've not enjoyed the rest. So like less than two thirds of them I've enjoyed. And I do still have one on my TBR that I'll read when I do my Deanna Rayborn trying a new author video. So you know, I still I guess have one book that might make it into this data set eventually. But overall, I don't know that I'm that Im I don't know that there's a lot of generalizations I can make from this. Well, I guess the only thing I can say is that a book being popular in mystery thriller for me is no guarantee that I'm going to enjoy it. That's probably the most I can say from this. And some of the books that are popular, I think are really bland and boring. And probably some of the reason why they are popular is because they're kind of like a least common denominator thing where they are easy to recommend because they don't have like a strong flavor. So they're just sort of like generically enjoyable. That might be kind of some of my conclusions. Uh, in terms of the two specific rounds and my results from that, in terms of me liking a book or not liking a book, if I normalize it to, if I normalize it to five books each and I drop one of the DNF, from the second round. Uh, I liked 40% of both of them, so pretty similar there. My average rating for the books I finished was higher for the second round because I would say overall my favorite book I read for any of this was probably The Housemaid. It was also like the most surprising to me. So oh, like if I take out the DNFs, the second round was better. But if I include the DNFs, the first round was like way better because I only had one DNF in that and I had three in the second round. So you know, I think I would say overall the winner of this little experiment was round one, which were books that I already owned. They were already on my TBR, like my physical TBR. The loser was the second round of Kindle Unlimited picks. But like I said, my favorite book that I read in this was The Housemaid. So I am glad I did the second round because I think it's an interesting data point to me to consider even if something is out of my comfort zone, if it is super hype, it might be worth trying at least from Kindle Unlimited or the library. Like even if I don't want to buy it, maybe it's worth giving a try. And that's why I do these kind of projects in general, I should say. Like I could just read things that I'm very confident I'm gonna like, but at that point, like not challenging myself, I'm not like growing my taste and growing what I can enjoy. So I like pushing myself a little bit. And uh, yeah, like I said, I think pretty definitively, I would say that the first round was more enjoyable for me, even though that was a pretty meh pile of books. So overall for this experiment, lots of just fine books with a couple of standouts. Yeah, maybe the moral of the story is don't just don't trust Goodreads. I think we already knew that. And maybe it's not even don't trust Goodreads. Don't trust people. Popular, don't trust popular opinion. <laughs> because it seems to be very questionable, at least from where I'm standing. So anyway, that will do it for this two-part vlogging series. Uh, let me know what you thought about any of the books I read. Let me know what you thought about this overall concept. And if you like these kind of like multi-part vlogging experiments, I think this was kind of fun. So hopefully you guys think so too. But yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!